I can bandage this old ball up again. Yeah. Uh. Yes, Mom gonna sew this ball up again, can we? No place else left up to sew. Like a pair of old socks. Pretty soon you have to darn the darn, right, partner? Yeah, you want to help? Yeah. <coughs> oh, breathe easy now. Breathe easy, huh? <coughs> Shouldn't have come out here, that's for sure. I'm fine. It'll pass, really. Let them play. You are going to have to talk to a doctor, at least. God's will. If my faith is strong enough, I'll get better. I am not saying anything against your religion, you know that. But if you are not better by tomorrow morning, I am taking you to the doctor. <laughs> you can tell God it's my doing. That it was my idea. That I didn't know any better. You sure as heck believe that. All my boys. You're the biggest. And Richard. Come on. Come on, Richard. Wayne. Alice. Pick up the things, Richard. And Let's get your mother home. Huh? And... Raymond, Raymond, see, I remember, I'm, I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine. working on that dam and we had to live in a tent Richard he was just a baby and it rained oh it rained so hard that the tent leaked and the leak was right over one of my boots <laughs> filled that shoe halfway up remember oh no. April showers will come your way they bring the flowers that bloom in me.
car, haven't they? Mister, you gotta move your car. What? Hey, you can't leave your car out there. Move it, huh? Who brought in that last? Hey, buddy, I'm talking to you. She gonna be all right? You brought in the woman in the nightgown? She's my wife. She gonna be all right? Your wife died. I'm sorry. No, see, she has spells like this. She's gonna be okay. Your wife is dead. What? What do you mean dead? What'd you do to her, buddy? What'd you do to her? Hold it. There was nothing we could do. Your wife needed medical attention days, weeks ago. Peritonitis, maybe tuberculosis. It was a bad infection. Just too late. We barely had a chance to examine her. It's too late. I'm sorry. To you, O God, we surrender Florence, strong in faith, beloved wife and mother, whose memory her family will cherish as she rests in your everlasting arms. Amen. Amen. What will you do now, Mr. Jackson? Got four boys to raise. Don't imagine I'll lack for things to do. I wish I was well enough to help. She was a good woman, Elmer. A real good woman. Do we have to leave her here forever? It's so, son. if I cried, would she? Oh, I don't think she'd mind much. I ain't gonna cry, though. Anyways. boy. Your mama left me with four strong sons. We'll make her proud, right? Yeah. Richard? first in line when there's work to be had. I'm on a job right now. I just need a little help with my boys. You know, till I get caught up with the bills. I just think you should consider the benefits of a foster home for the children. No. No, I told you, they've got a home. I got pictures. If you want to see, we took pictures. These boys are very young. In their formative years, they really need the care and love of a mother figure. I told you, there's mother. Mother's dead. Yes, I'm aware of that. But the hospital report indicates that she suffered from your prolonged refusal to seek medical attention. And we have to consider what might happen if the boys became ill. I guess I came to the wrong place. We are here to help, Mr. Jackson. Our only concern is with the children's well-being.
All right. Okay. Uh, see, what I thought is, if someone could just let me have a few dollars for a while, just until I get the funeral paid off, that's all. And maybe hire someone to look after my boys when I'm at work. I got a job. Just that the pay is all spoke for right now. That's not our policy. We do already have many welfare recipients from whom we would assign someone to do that. Fine by me. Young girl could probably do it. I'm afraid not. We'd hardly send a young girl. Whoever. Sooner the better. You understand this will only be for a probationary period. What? Temporarily. For the time being. It may well be determined that your boys would do much better in a foster home. No! No! You just forget that. My boys have a home. They're not orphans. They're my sons. If you don't want to help out, just say so. I'll make do. We'll try to accommodate you, Mr. Jackson, on a trial basis. What was that all about? Elmer Jackson. His wife died of peritonitis. Incredible. He said he couldn't take her to a doctor in time because it was against her religion. You'd think with the responsibility for four children that people would at least try to stay alive, wouldn't you? Oh, that's not the half of it. There were no birthplaces listed for the children. I asked. He said he delivered them at home. Can you believe it? What happens if they get sick? Is he just going to let them die one by one? Well, just be sure it's all in the record. The worst comes to worst, we'll need it in the record. Wait! What are you doing out here? Where is the woman that's supposed to be watching you? She's in the house. She won't let us in. She won't let us in the house when there's a man in there. Chicken and dumplings. Me too. Me too. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Now well, we got that settled. We're just gonna have to dig in and make do, right? Yeah. Right, Raymond? Right. See what I'm trying to say is that from now on, yeah. it's just us. 
Yep. Isn't that right? Yeah. We're gonna have to organize our own outfit. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Richard. From now on, I'm appoint new foreman. When I'm away at work, you're in charge. Okay. Okay. So the rest of you men, listen up. When I'm not here, Richard's in charge. Got it, Wayne? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Richard, you're in charge. He attacked me. He's crazy. Do you know what he did? All right, all right. We had no intention of subjecting you to abuse. He's insane. And so are his kids. Dirty, filthy all the time. You can't tell him anything. Like a bunch of wild animals. We're very sorry. I'm not going back there. You couldn't pay me enough. Now just try to put it out of your mind. I still get my check, don't I? Oh, yes, of course. Don't worry about a thing. Just hope I haven't caught anything. Ought to be in a cage of people like that. Yes, this is the welfare office. I'd like to speak to the juvenile division, please. They're left on their own. Well, now. And are you the little man of the house? I'm the foreman. There. You cut that out. Leave him alone! Hey, kid. Hold it there. The worst thing, the worst whoa, thing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Take it easy. <sighs> Where are my boys? They drove in here just as bold as you please. Who? Like they owned the place. Just like they owned the place. Who? Some social worker, she called herself, had policemen with her and Elmer. They took the boys away, yelling and kicking. Why? I don't know. They had court papers with them. I, I, I tried to stop them, but they had those papers. I, I think it said juvenile court on them as far as I could see. Just got to be some kind of mistake, that's all. Yes, I know. The boys has been so good, good as could be. Where'd they take them? Makes no sense at all. Said they was taken to the hospital. 
all as fit as a fiddle and they're taking him to the hospital. Ain't been sick a day, not a one of them, since little Raymond had the sniffles. Yeah. Thanks. Again, call the police. <laughs> Mr. Jackson, do you understand what I'm saying? What? Mr. Jackson, it's Elmer, isn't it? Elmer, you must understand. We're concerned here only with the welfare of the children. When the health and safety of minor children is threatened, we must step in. It's the law. Wait a minute. Listen, there's been some great big mistake here. We're talking about my sons here. You just can't walk in and take away a man's sons. They are now wards of this court, Mr. Jackson. You can't do that. How can you do that? The children have been continually abandoned, allowed to fend for themselves, often endangering themselves by playing in and near a busy roadway. When the department assigned a woman to care for them, you became abusive and violent to her. She was a whore! Now you listen to me. The same lady has been sent on three other child care assignments with no complaints or incidents, Your Honor. Your sons will be placed in foster homes where they can receive proper care and attention. You will be permitted to visit your sons after they've had a chance to adjust to their foster home environment. In a few months, you will be notified. Now, you remember what I've just said. I don't want to have to find you in contempt of court, or you'll find yourself in jail. Do you understand? with the department's rules of visitation of minor children in foster care, a nine-month adjustment period has now elapsed. You will be permitted a one-hour visit with the aforementioned male children.
down there. Uh, Resin. Uh, Resin. Hey. Yeah, Raven. Uh, uh, Foreman. Thank you. Taking care of everybody for me? Yeah. Thank you. Sir. Huh? Here. Here, Raven. Whoa. What do we got? Something else. Here, tear it open. Tear it open. <laughs> Look at that, a bell. A bell. Okay. <laughs> Where have you been? Why would you come to see us? It wouldn't let me, son. I wanted to. The judge said no. Take us home. We want to go home with you. No. see by these records that this is the second time you forcibly tried to remove these children in violation of a court order. When uh, I saw them again, you know, when I felt them touch me, it, you don't understand. They're mine. Now, Mr. Jackson, these children were placed in foster care for good and proper cause. According to this, you're currently unemployed and devoid of funds. So I'm going to order you, Mr. Jackson. And this is an official restraining order of this court. You will not attempt to see these minor children, nor will you interfere in any way with the proper care and upbringing of these children under the jurisdiction of this court. Do you understand? Richard, he's the oldest one. Said he wanted to be just like me. And he'll be good at making things. If someone shows him how, you know, gives him a hand. Wayne. Wayne cries when he wakes up at night. Gotta leave the bathroom light on for Wayne. Then he's fine. As long as you leave the bathroom light on. Uh, not Alice. 
Ellis, uh, he sleeps like a rock. Got to turn him over to make sure he's still breathing. Oatmeal cookie. Yeah. Ellis will do just about anything for an oatmeal cookie. Raymond, he's a little guy, you know. He's got little hands. I mean, they look little. But once he gets a grip on something, uh, pulls on your nose, your ear. All I asked was for a few dollars. Baby, sir. from the start. They know how to take care of boys like you here. No, no, no. You get back in the car. They don't Davis. take babies here. Raymond! 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 I'll take the one with the glasses. This one. are getting bigger. You ought to see Raymond, Florence. You gotta hug like a wrestler. <laughs> yeah. You hear me talking to you, don't you? Sure. I know no one else is listening. Don't know where I went wrong. What I did wrong. Seems like every move I make gets me in more trouble. <laughs> Seems like they really got me fenced in this time. I don't know what to do. <sighs> Get myself thrown in jail. What good would that do, huh? 
They got funny rules now, hon. Got me down as crazy, that's for sure. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> you always knew that, didn't you? Yeah, both crazy. Raising four boys in his times. <laughs> back open around here <laughs> gotta find a job get some money save up somehow get enough together to try again well, I'll get them back I promise I will promise God, I miss you. Enjoying your food? Good. kids. So I kept the kids and got rid of the husband. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Millie. It's awfully hard to tell the men from the boys. That's why I'm still single. Anna, 
You got an admirer. I'm afraid it's not quite that simple, Mr. Jackson. Simple? Hasn't really been all that simple saving $250, ma'am. It's that you have no record of steady employment locally at this time. I've only been back in town a day. I was working steady when you took my boys. And then there's the matter of housing. The agency requires that you can provide a home with a separate bedroom for each child. Separate bedroom? That's crazy. Where are they living now? At the Ritz? I do not make the rules, Mr. Jackson. Well, who does? I'll get a lawyer. Can a lawyer find that out? If you wish. However, you can't just expect to march back in here after a period of abandonment and expect us to take your sons out of a safe and loving environment and place them into one that the court has ruled to be incompetent. Uh, can I at least, uh, visit my sons, see them? I'm afraid not, especially in view of your record on previous visitations. I'm sorry. Perhaps in time, if you can show some evidence of being able to meet the requirements, steady employment, adequate bank account for emergencies, acceptable housing, we may consider your request. So a stitch must be fun. Oh, Millie, when you do it all day for a living, it ceases to be a whole lot of fun. But thank you for the compliment anyway. <laughs> thank you. Well, I'll be. Kiss a frog and look what happens. I should ask you what for, and for what. Well, you see, uh, yesterday I was sitting down there, and I was staring at you. So I apologize. Anyway, I realize what I must look like, sort of like bad news in need of a bath, no doubt. You made me take a good look at myself. First good luck in a long time. Thank you. You, uh, probably think that's just a come on, huh? Well, I, I don't get many come ons, uh, so I really couldn't judge. I mean, I, uh, noticed you weren't wearing a wedding ring. Oh, well, I, I can explain that. Uh, I'm not married. <sighs> no use in practicing how to do this for a day or two. Uh, would you go to the movie with me? <coughs> uh, 
I never, uh... like going to a movie alone. I guess it's like, uh... Well, you know, it's uh, like you have nobody to talk to about it after. <laughs> okay. You win. On the house. First prize for the fastest worker in town. <laughs> <laughs> notice how everybody's problems get solved in the end and the music turns all gorgeous and everybody marries everybody else. <laughs> yeah oh yeah that's what Florence used to say after going to the movies walk out on a cloud come down with a thud I'm sorry I always cry well we lived with an aunt after my folks died. And then she got very sick and had to go back east to stay with family. And I had to take care of my younger brother and sister. Believe me, only for a while, I didn't know if I'd make it. Yeah. Well, just be thankful you didn't ask any of those helpful government people for help. I still don't see how they could do that. Just take your boys away like that. Oh, they got rules, procedures. The judges read them to me twice. Yeah, but it, it's not like you were out of work or you didn't care. I couldn't explain it to anybody. I mean, those people, they look at kids without a mother like they're deformed or something. Fathers? <laughs> we don't count. We're not supposed to know anything about raising kids. We're just sires to those people. You're never going to get them back by giving up. Who's giving up? I'm not giving up. They keep trying to make it impossible. Now they say i got to build a house as big as a hotel before I can even see them again. It's impossible. Well, why not possible? You're a carpenter, aren't you? I mean, how many houses have you built for other people? Maybe you could build one for yourself someday. It's worth dreaming about, isn't it? Maybe you got a thought there. Yeah. Happens every once in a while. <laughs> Beat him with a hammer and nails, huh? Hurry up and climb down. Be careful, Wayne. Just thankful they're safe and sound. Thank you so much for bringing them home. They've got some pretty wild tales about this place. Pretty wild. Oh, yes, I can imagine. I've heard them all. <laughs> Mentally disturbed boys given to flights of fancy.
Better keep an eye on these three. I can't keep rounding up your strays. Stop you from running. you man and wife you may kiss the bride That shoots the honeymoon in Paris, huh? <laughs> I guess it'll take you a whole week to start a family, right? Uh, well, we've already got one. It's just a matter of collecting them, right? All we need now is a few loads of lumber and a whole lot of love. running away all the time. I figure his running days are over. Come on, up you go. State medal, Jackson. Jackson, front and center. Here it is. Nice day for a ride, eh, Richard? Thank you, Jackson. No funny stuff, eh? You don't want to have to handcuff you and blow your nose all the way. You behave and we're going to get along just fine, right?
Hold on. I haven't got the job yet. <laughs> well, if you wear your war paint, you'll get it. <laughs> you want war paint? There's war paint. What have you done? <laughs> I'll show you what I've done. Start laying out the house. Without me, gee, thanks a lot. Here's the porch. Then the living room will be right here with a fireplace. Over here will be the kitchen with a window that looks out on the backyard. Our bedroom will be right here. Then two more bedrooms right back there. That lawyer, he earned his 15 bucks. Made him give up on their big idea of five bedrooms. <laughs> Better make it four anyway. What? Well, I know something the lawyer doesn't know. <laughs> Better make it four bedrooms, darling. I've got a feeling it's gonna be a girl. <laughs> <laughs> You're something, you know that? <laughs> oh, wow, wait until the boy's here. Not only do they have a mother, they're gonna have a new baby sister. <laughs> well, we got a lot of sawing and hammering to do before then, but we're getting there, aren't we? Oh, boy, we're getting there. <laughs> do you have any idea where your father lives now, Richard? Has he ever tried to contact you, write you a letter, or anything like that? I don't know. I'm going to talk again. I'm going to see what I can do. I can't make any promises just yet. But we'll talk again in a month or so. Okay. Okay. And what else? Practice reading. I'll practice. Right. You go along now. Practice reading. Well, I guess that's about it for today. Don't forget, staff meeting Friday at 3. Uh, if we could just take another minute, I wanted to bring up this case that I've been handling. Well, it is getting a little late, George. I know, it'll only take a minute. Uh, Jackson, Richard Jackson. Uh, now, I believe you've already reviewed it once, but I think we should take another look at it because the September transfers are coming up for remedial school. I don't recall a Richard Jacks. Well, my name's here, isn't it? Yes. Now, I've had two visits with this young man, and frankly, in my opinion, he belongs in a facility for education and training rather than here. I don't know. This uh, IQ doesn't indicate that. Well, his performance in the Stanford Binet is low, but certainly not low enough to classify him as retarded. The boy's problem, it seems to me, to be a lack of opportunity at education rather than retardation. Mother died. Father deserted the family, diagnosed as mental deficient, familial from the start. I don't see any basis for review here. Rather typical history, don't you think, George? Behavioral problems from early on, it seems from this. A chronic runaway, a troublemaker. Oh, well, I know, but look at the dates. The original diagnosis is somewhat remote, and the history there has just been repeated and copied down from one document to the other. Well, I see Dr. Prentice's signature here. Oh, Dr. Prentice, please, let's not get into that. Well, he didn't just gloss over this boy's record when he gave his recommendation. No, I'm sure that he didn't. We have a certain moral obligation to the community in cases like this, George. I'm sure you agree. No, I don't. And when it comes to Dr. Prentice's recommendations, I guess I just naturally think first of our moral obligation to the patient. George, we won't get into a moral discussion here. Dr. Prentice acts in accordance with state policy in these matters. Unless you can show us some dramatic evidence, Richard Jackson stays here and will be sterilized when he reaches the age specified here. Beyond our scope in this room, Dr. Prentice has the last word on sterilization. Are we all agreed? Come on, I'm beat. Gee, boss, it's only 1 a.m. <laughs> Get Melissa with. Come on. What's the 
the matter? You're not tired. You can work all night. Want to give me a clue? Oh, I'll just have to guess. Well, we're almost through. The lawyer's already filed for the release papers. And you're sitting here like a little boy who's just lost his prized pocket knife. <coughs> You know, I'd say you're a man who's afraid. Afraid he'll get what he's been wanting. Mind me. I'm never going to try to hide anything from you. You want to know a secret? I thought about taking Melissa and running. You serious? Oh, God, I'm afraid too. Four boys I've never seen charging in here. What's going to happen to us? And a little Melissa, is she just going to get knocked around and lost in the shuffle? You think I don't worry? Probably won't even remember me. Got lies of their own. May even hate me. That could be. Maybe we ought to just leave well enough alone. Oh, no, you don't. No, you're never going to be all one piece until they're back. Besides, you promised her. And you promised me. And you promised Melissa. And you back out now. And I'm going up and down the street, knocking on doors, telling everybody that Elmer Jackson goes back on his promises. You think I won't? I will. <laughs> And this release form is for the youngest, I believe. Raymond. Raymond is at the Sisters of Mercy Orphanage. Do you know where that is? Gibbs Road, yeah, I'll find it. Uh, I don't mean to uh, dissuade or alarm you, but I feel I should caution you, Mr. and Mrs. Jackson. Well, not to be too disappointed. Well, he's been disappointed in here for years on end. I don't really think this is the day for it. Yes. See, only I feel I should point out, I mean, look, it seems that over the years, the boys have developed, well, some problems. Raymond was in a number of foster homes before he came to us. He's a very quiet boy, actually. I think I should tell you, well, you may notice a certain repressed anger in Raymond at first. Oh, we think he'll overcome it, of course, but don't be surprised if... Raymond, this is your father. <laughs> hey. Hey, it's me, your old dad. You don't remember. Well, uh... We're gonna go pick up your brothers. Won't that be great? Who? Well, you got uh, three brothers, Raymond. They're all crazy. He's crazy, and you're going to be sorry, Mr. Biggity, when he makes you as crazy as he is. Just a minute. Hey. You touch him and I'll kill you. Go! Come on, son. It's okay. Thank you.
I'm Melissa. Raymond. How much are they paying you? What, Raymond? The county's paying you plenty, I bet. How much do you get for three? This is your father, Raymond. That's what they all say. They just want the money. I ain't got a father. How many vasectomies do we have scheduled for today? Sterilizations? Six. No, nine. I'm sorry. You're sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Jackson. This release form is no good. What do you mean, no good? Well, this order only applies to county institutions. This is a state facility. Your son was committed here, Mr. Jackson, on the recommendation of competent medical and psychiatric authorities. You know, I've about had it with competent authority. How do I go about getting Richard uncommitted? Your attorney would have to advise you on that, I'm afraid. Can I at least see him? I'm afraid not. Your son is undergoing medical treatment right now, which cannot be interrupted. I just want to see him, talk to him. My own flesh and blood, and I can't even touch him? I'm sorry, Mr. Jackson, it's out of the question. I'm not going to debate the matter with you. Right, no debate. You can lock him up, put him on pills and needles, and who knows what else. Cage him up, and no debate. I'm his father. I just want to look in on him and say hello, and it's no, no debate. Go to hell. He just goes wandering off like this. It'll take time. Yeah. There he is, Elmer. There he is. Hey, Wayne. 
Hey, partner. Wayne, where are you going? I'm looking for my mother. Whoa, now, Wayne, we talked about that, remember? Your real mom died a long time ago. We told you that, remember? Ah, you probably forgot. You were just a little boy then. I know I'm not your real mother. We both know that, don't we? But you know what? We could pretend for a while, couldn't we? We could just try it out and see if you like having me for a mother. Just for a while. All right? Okay? Okay. You do this, son. I didn't break it. I. It's okay. Nothing that can't be fixed, right? Ellis, listen to me. I'll tell you something. That is your bike. It's your garage. It's your house. And I'm your dad. Yours. All yours. And around here, no one is ever going to hurt you for telling the truth. That's right. I mean, I may jump up and down if you tell me you put an alligator in the bathtub or something, but I will never, ever hurt you for telling me the truth. Remember that, huh? Dad. I broke the light. The ch chain keeps coming off and, and I hit a tree. Well. First thing we gotta do is fix the doggone chain then, huh? Want me to show you how to do it? Uh, look, fell off again. end up breaking your nose. Now look, I don't understand. Richard Jackson's files lists him as abandoned. Family whereabouts unknown. Yet this reception record shows that he had a visitor some time ago. A man who claims to be the boy's father. Look, Dr. Northfield, these things happen. It just so happens that this boy doesn't even think he has a father anymore. And when he shows up, you turn him away. I don't know. Boy could have been on the quarantine list, detention, awaiting treatment, who knows? According to the dates, it seems he was being sterilized. Well, that's out of my hands, Doctor, as you well know. Besides, the man hasn't been back. Thought we saw the place, what we had to deal with in here. Decided to leave well enough alone. Often happens. Well, I may just see about that.
The store owner said turn him over to his folks this time. Next time, he won't be so easy on him. Thanks. I appreciate it. This ain't his first time shoplifting, you know. You better keep him on a short leash. He's going to wind up in juvenile hall. Thanks. Hold it. Raymond, I don't want you out of this yard for the next week. You can't tell me what to do. You're not my real father. Yeah, so there. My real father would never hit me. You're right. Raymond, I uh, wish I was the father you wanted, but I'm not. I'm just a guy who's made mistakes and tried to fix them best I can. Never gonna be a big shot. And after all the tough luck you've had, here comes some more, right? Your father is just some guy who makes a living with a hammer and a saw. I'm sorry I hit you. I'm still making mistakes, I guess. But you got a big problem, Raymond. No matter how much you hate me, I'll always love you. That's right. You're stuck with that. Your whole life. You got to go through the rest of your life knowing that your father is just some old, ordinary guy who loves you. Well, you guys want supper or what now? as tall as I expected. Richard, your father's name is Elmer, is that right? I think so. Well, it's been a long time. Do you remember him at all? Well, sort of. He used to play baseball with us. Anything else? Do you remember anything other than the baseball? made things for us. He was good at building things. He made a wagon once. In an airplane you could sail around the yard. And a crib for the baby. I remember. That would be Raymond? I guess so. Yeah. Richard, how did you feel when he left? Do you remember? I was crying. Because he was going away. No. I was crying because he was crying. I mean, the policeman was shoving his face down against the road. He was only taking us home. And they got him. And they got real mean, and I guess they hurt him. He was crying. I know he was crying. That's <laughs> the last I saw him. As far as you know, your father really liked you boys. Oh, sure. Whoever said different? Ho! 
Ho, ho, ho! Oh, it's me! There we go! All right, it's wow. perfect! Beautiful! Beautiful! Oh, I want to swell. Here, oh, switch with Raymond! It's great! Raymond, go get the door! Get the door. Maybe next year we could have Richard here with us, too. Sound like the lawyer. What did he say? It's going to be the middle of next year before they even get a hearing date put on the calendar. Come on in, Richard. I've been doing a little detective work. Would you like to help me with it? Sure. Good. Here. Just testing your reflexes. <clears throat> Come on in, sit down. <clears throat> Operator, I'd like to make a long distance call. Klondike, four, five, five. Break me up a chunk of that, will you? I'm starving. Hello. Who am I speaking to, please? Elmer Jackson. What can I do for you? Uh, Merry Christmas, Mr. Jackson. Your son, Richard, would like to say hello to you. Richard? I found him in the records and the telephone directory. Say hello to your father, Richard. Yeah.